a walk out with Paul and Jay with Red Hot Stories from Post Game. Interviews announced to the hour. at the Growler. All right, welcome into the latest edition of the walkout presented by Cincy Shirts. Paul Daner Jr., Jay Morrison are here with you on a day that not only do you not want to print a shirt off that you can have for memory, you just want to forget it all together if you're a Bengals fan. And that was another day where this team found a way to lose a game that it felt like they should win and had the ability to go win. They lose against the Baltimore Ravens right behind us at Paycor Stadium, 41-38 to in overtime, wasting a career day by Joe Burrow. It goes for 392 yards and five touchdowns, one interception, and it was just another in what is becoming a pile of losses this year that all felt like they should have gone the other way, and it has gotten real late, real fast for a team that never thought they'd be sitting here at one and four right now. No, they're, I, I think the team is stunned right now. I think the, the fans are stunned. There's, there's a lot of angry fans on social media, but it was, it was strange. Sometimes we take the elevator down to post game com, com, press conferences. A lot of times it's backed up. We take the stairs and you're walking down with the fans and it's raucous after a win. There's a lot of who days. Sometimes after a loss, there's a lot of screaming and yelling. It was just silent today. Yeah. It was packed, and you're waiting, just waiting, standing there for the longest time for people to kind of filter in from the each level and just spiraling down, kind of the way the Bengals are right now. And you get down, and just nobody was saying a word. It was really kind of, just, like I said, just stunned silence of what they just witnessed. This was a big day for the team, a big day for the franchise, a big day for Joe Burrow. He had to be damn near perfect. A big game for the Bengals. This is what we heard about all week. You know the spot they were in. They put themselves in this spot by the games they lost earlier in this season, of this being such an important one for them to go get, return to AFC North where they were so poor last year. And it was a lot of the same stuff that we've been talking about. You know, for, a, for a half, it felt like, oh, the defense, maybe it's something encouraging. They got a safety, they got some stop, they forced three punts. Yeah. I mean, you felt like maybe something was happening in the second half. It was more of the same as they forced Lamar Jackson to beat them. Boy, did he ever. He just absolutely let loose. They end up with 520 yards of offense. That is amongst the top 10 as far as most yards in the last year plus, so dating back to the beginning of the 2023 season. Hey, there's one other Bengals performance on that one. The other L they took to Houston last year where they gave up a ton of yards in that one too. It's more of the same, the same defense that you've seen over the last couple of years has showed up here and it's wasting what has been an unbelievable season thus far from Joe Burrow in the offense. Yeah, and so on Thursday show, we did the, the dual walkouts, the, the different yeah. um, reactions to what this would be. And I, I can't help but think, you know, you, you can't take anything off the board, but if Evan McPherson makes that field goal, the snaps isn't dropped by Ryan Rico and they win that game in overtime, how different it would feel right now, not just being two and three instead of one and four, but how different would we feel about this defense? Because you take out that Derrick Henry 51-yard run, and you're looking at 41 rushes for 124 yards. They finally would have done a decent job against the run, against an AFC North team. Yes, Lamar did what Lamar does. But you mentioned it. They, they played pretty well in the first half, and they they got off the field on some third downs. They, they forced some actual third and five, six, seven, some hard things to – to pick up as opposed to all the third and ones, third and twos we've seen. And it just, it looks so much uglier now after that 51 yard run, 175 rushing yards again, uh, that this team has given up. And like you mentioned, the five to 20 total, it's an end result, an end result game, obviously. And you just look at everything. It, it would have felt so much different had everything not gone awry on that overtime possession. So, there's a lot that we want to get to and unpack about all of this, but um, so we need to talk about Burroughs Day. We need to talk about what I what I think is becoming a major issue here with this team, and that is losing plays at winning time. Mm -hmm. And that has become kind of the theme of their first five weeks. We're gonna get into that. We got to get into what we heard in the locker room from Jamar Chase and his shitty route, and Ryan Rico talking about adrenaline, trying to get the ball down. 
and everybody else on the defense side of the ball trying to figure out how this stuff keeps happening. There's a lot for us to get to. A really interesting post-game press conference from Joe Burrow. Um, all of that we're going to get to. First, I want to remind everybody, our next live show is going to be down at BetMGM, Nation Kitchen and Bar at the Banks. It's going to be before the Eagles game. That'll be a noon start for us on that 4 o'clock game that day. We hope to see you down there. Maybe they'll have some wins between now and then. Okay. We don't know. We'll be there anyway, still having fun and giving stuff away. And we'd love to see you. And you can voice your questions to us, and we'll try to get to everything we can at that game. We love those things. And if you, if you have any other big game you want to go to, make sure you make your way down to Nation at MGM. It's an awesome venue right down there on the banks, uh, and it's, it's a great time to go down there. Maybe go get your losing ticket for your second chance drawing on Thursday and see if you can win 100 bucks from Nation and from MGM in bonus bets along with Jay. Say hi to me. Say hi to Jay. He'll be there trying to win. He'll be competing. Uh, all right. That said, um, and before, oh yeah, reminder, Cincy Shirts, of course, Growler Pod, Growler Pod at checkout, and you can get 10% off anything you buy. You don't have to buy Bengals stuff. They have lots of good Bengals stuff. You can buy anything you get 10% off. Remember that. Um, all right, let's, here's my point, Jay, and this is kind of what I wrote about up on the Athletic now. that it, 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 it kind of is the tie that binds here. This is a team that has a lot of good to it. It has a lot of talent. I think this is the best offense of the Joe Burrow era. Yeah. I think he's playing as good as he's ever played in totality. I think the defense obviously has tons of issues, okay? The biggest problem with this team is if you look, and this is not specific to the defense. Obviously, everything starts there with why they're bad right now. But this is a team that continues to make losing plays at winning time. Let's talk about what happens when, okay, things have gone awry, right? They You you give the ball to Joe Burrow, he's driving up three and trying to go put the game away. You score four touchdowns in a row. You're on the move. You throw a slant to Jamar Chase on what Jamar calls a shitty route. Uh, they're yelling slant from the sideline, apparently. Burrow throws it. Humphrey goes in front and gets an interception. Okay, they go down. Your defense actually makes a stop. Yeah. You tie the game. Ball gets kicked. With one minute and 35 seconds left and three timeouts, the ball is in Joe Burrow's hand. Throw the defense in the rubbish, okay? like Throw it away. To forget that conversation. You're giving an offense that has been unstoppable 135 and three timeouts to go and get into Evan McPherson's field goal range. Sound familiar? Remember the opener against New England when yeah. they got the ball in their own end and just needed a drive to go win the game despite everything that had gone wrong, and they went three and out. Right. Remember against Kansas City when they had a drive and they could have finished it off and ran it out? Instead, they went seven plays for 17 yards and had to kick the ball back to Patrick Mahomes for Mahomes to eventually have fourth and 16 days on Anthony notwithstanding a, a game of drive that didn't get it done and they give the, give the game away. Here, again, you get the ball with a chance to go win the game and they go three and out. They get sacked up the middle on first down yep. and you end up having to concede essentially, wave the white flag that it's third and 17. It's better to just say we play for overtime rather than try to leave time for Lamar Jackson, which I don't, that's not the problem. The problem is that you went three and out again. This is supposed to be your strength in the moment to go win the game. You've got to do more. Everything's going well for you. And then all of a sudden, you go interception, three and out, and then in overtime, it's three runs up the middle. We'll talk about that in a second. Everybody hold your anger. Three runs up the middle for essentially nothing, and you have the field goal debacle. Look, the defense had their losing plays too, tons of them. Right there, for all the offense did well, when you needed it most, yep. they gave you nothing. And it's becoming a theme this year. It is. And, and, and really, if you think about it, that, that, that last drive, Burrow gets sacked, a rush right up the middle, loses seven yards, it blows everything up. How many times have we heard players say, you got to forget about it, move on to the next play? I don't think Zach Taylor and Joe Burrow did that to some degree, forgot about it. I think that third, that first down, that seven-yard sack on first down was still in their minds when they got the ball in overtime and led to the super conservative run, run, run. But you're right. It's it's, it's not just not getting it done. I mean, these turnovers in the fourth quarter, they haven't turned the ball over 
almost, I don't know, do they have a, a turnover in the first three quarters this year? It, it's, it's been really rare. But they've had these brutal ones in the fourth quarter. And I don't know if it was, if Jamar was, he said it was a shitty route. I don't know if he was just trying to take some of the heat off of Burrow. Burrow didn't, didn't put it on himself. He just said Marlon Humphrey made a great play, kind of reminiscent. I'd do it all over again. I wouldn't have made a different decision there. Yeah. But it, it's, it's just, you're right. You've got to make those plays in crunch time. And expect, it's just, it's dumbfounding how they don't. When, it's one thing if you're just struggling and you're in, a, in a, you're in a slog and you just can't get it done at the end. When you're just going right through a really good defense all game long, and then the last two drives look like that, you do have to start questioning what's going on in the biggest moment for these guys. And then the same thing on special teams. You know, yeah. so so here's here's one common thread. You have a very young team. They kept 12 rookies, okay? And two of the biggest plays this year in terms of things that have gone awry have been what? Rookies. Dejon Anthony, a seventh round pick rookie. Now think what you want to think about that penalty. It is what it is. And then you have Ryan Rico, a rookie. He's been great as a putter. Has to make a hold. He talks about getting adrenaline that pops up when that goes down. I mean, young rookies doing rookie things. And then you have a defense with too many problems to count at this point, including a, a lot of young players that aren't making plays at any point, winning time or losing time or win any time. And, and that becomes such a big problem as far as where they're at. That's where they're at and where they're going to be next Sunday is on national TV. Great chance to go out and improve to the nation that they are not the team people think they are at one and four, or a chance for more of the same against a Giants team that shocked Seattle today out in Seattle. If they lose that game, go to one and five, it's going to get really ugly. It's ugly enough right now, but where they are right now is just puzzling to, to them, to everyone with how this offense is yeah. playing. So, yeah, exactly. And you said, I mean, the, the offense is playing great and you have an offense that is Probably when we put the, when I when I do the weekly metrics, you're going to see them up in the top two or three in every single major category. These types of teams don't typically lose, and I think they're going to win their fair share of games. You're just you're one in four at this point, and and you know it's fine to have this this type of an offense, um, but you you have to be able to make the plays at the end to win, and they're not doing it. Meanwhile, Joe Burrow after the game. Um, I kind of asked him, like, is there kind of some disbelief at how are we one and four? And he said, no, I have no disbelief on why. I know exactly why we're one and four. We're not making those plays. We're not making those winning plays at the end of the game. And he pointed out also, we are not a championship level team when that was used in a question posed to him. And we've had a lot of tough conversations. We're having a lot of tough conversations. I like to think that we're going to pull ourselves out. But, you know, you could sense, look, we heard it from Joe all week. He knew how big this game was. He knew how big it was for him and for the team and for where they were at. And so you end up, he knows right then, this is a mess. And they have made a mess of these first five games. And no matter how good they're playing offensively, it doesn't really matter because they have don't have any of the wins to prove it, that, that they deserve to be in any conversation at the end. And all you can do is go back out and play. But, you know, Burrow certainly sounded like a guy who was coming to terms with the fact that this thing has, is starting to go too far sideways. Yeah, I mean, they didn't. They knew it was a big game, and they played like it. They came out, they yeah. took control. They led by 10 points in the fourth quarter. The, the Bengals were 30-3 and three in the Zach Taylor era when leading by at least 10 in the fourth quarter. And the Ravens are notorious for blowing big leads like this late. And it totally flipped, and it's something that it, – you know they're going to say the cliches and go back to work and get get better and work harder and all that. But you have to wonder at some point where these things start lingering and filtering into the following week's prep and conversations and everything else around this team. Yeah, I mean, there wasn't any finger pointing, but, there, you know, the offense, it's hard not to. And you heard, you kind of heard it when I talked to T, when you heard from Jamar, it was like, look, we're, we're trying to put up 30 points every week. I mean, it's a team that has 105 points the last three weeks, yeah. and they're one and two in those games. That's a hard one to grasp, you know, when when you're just scoring. You know, back-to-back weeks, they scored four touchdowns and four drives, consecutive yeah. drives. I mean, 
they're they're doing things that you're just not seeing across the league right now. And that was a good Baltimore defense. I mean, mm-hmm. they're no slouch at all. And to do that against them and to still come away with a loss because you just can't do anything. Yeah, it's it's easy to say we're not fractured, uh, but you know that that's a hard one to judge off of. With with the final decision uh, in overtime, you get the gift. Yeah, from I mean a straight gift from Lamar Jackson. I'm not able to handle the snap. The entire sequence. Give me your view of the entire sequence. So my mind immediately flashed back to 2021 an overtime game here against San Francisco. They get the ball in overtime first. They go down. They get in field goal range, and they turtle up, and they just run Joe Mixon and don't even – it didn't even really look like they were trying to score a touchdown. They settle for the field goal. San Fran gets the ball, goes down, scores a touchdown, game over. Zach Taylor in the postgame press conference says, I'm probably going to lose sleep over this one. Next day he said, I did lose sleep over this one. And that changed everything. He said, I'm, I'm not taking the ball out of Burrow's hands again. I'm going to let that guy cook, so to speak. And – the starters win six consecutive games and they go to the Super Bowl with that mindset. And this was kind of the same thing. It's like you're, you're destroying this team all day long. You get the gift. You got it at, what was it, 38-yard line when they get it. That's not a gift. I mean, as great as Evan McPherson is, that's not a gimme. And they run, run, called a pass on third and 10, and, and Bro checked out of it to the run because he said it wasn't there. So three straight runs. And then the field goal goes awry. And I just I think this is another one. I don't know if Zach's gonna lose sleep, but he probably should, because if you're if he's being honest, you have truth serum, you gotta attack that series differently. You can't be scared of the, the sack like just because it happened one series earlier. You've got to attack a defense like this. They were doing it all game and it was working, and then they completely go against what they're doing and it cost them. Yeah, it is hard though, man, when you've got those last two plays in your head, when you've got the sack and the interception is the last two things you saw in big moments. And it's the only thing you can't do there is have a sack or an interception. And that's exactly what happened the last two times you tried to do it. You're in Evans range. You know, he just hit what just last week we were talking about in Carolina, what he did. And he's, he's, he's made, you know, he's missed from inside 40, but he's been clutch his whole career. You've got him at 53 or whatever. You think you're going to get some yards in the running game, by the way, which you're allowed to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and they don't. And, and so, yes, I think you can make that argument. But guess what? They still mi- – he misses a 40-yard. He missed – you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're, you're ta- it's a snap that doesn't get down. Mm-hmm. And so it, how much was it the fact that if you would have been closer, the same type of thing happens, you know, and, and it's just – it's inexcusable when this type of stuff happens everywhere. I, I tend to say I get it and, and, and I, I understand the frustration – but I have a hard time not going back to those two plays that happened previously and saying those are the only two things that can't happen. Let's let Evan go be Evan and win this game for us. Um, and it doesn't work out, and you're the GOAT, right? And and you're right. I mean, there's sleep to be lost over that. And a couple of players asked about it after the game, and we're sort of like, well, yeah, I mean, I, above my pay grade, but you'd like to see giving, giving us a shot there. And I, I think to me that's like 11th on the list of grievances in terms of why this game went the way it did. And I know that people, it's the last thing and it's impactful, but I, I, I think playing for Evan McPherson to be Evan McPherson isn't a bad call necessarily when you think of what happened the last two times the Bengals had the ball. Yeah. It, I don't know. That's I, my it, opinion on it. And, yeah. I, and I mean, they, I'm sure people are like, and you're dumb. You're an <laughs> idiot and I'm mad and Zach was wrong and you're wrong and, and, and maybe that's true. That's just, that's, it, it, I, I'm not saying that it isn't something that you would have liked to have seen more aggression. I just think of so many other things that mattered more than that in, over the course of this game. Yeah, but when we're talking about that last series, that's what, yep. that's what stood with me. And it's a different team, different sport. It's college football, but I go back to the, the New Year's Eve game, Ohio State and the college football club, Ryan Day did the same exact thing, basically just ran the ball to settle for a 50-yard field goal, they miss it, they lose the game. Totally different situation, but kind of similar. The one thing about that I thought was interesting is as they're they're trying to set up for that field goal, I looked down, I was like, is Evan warming up or is he just sitting there waiting? And I looked down, and I didn't see Evan, but I saw Cal Adamitis and Ryan Rico working on the snaps and the holes over and over again. And finally, Evan came over, and he's like, come on, guys. And he, like, he got him up out of that, and they stood, and they watched the third down play, and then they ran out on the field. And it, I asked Zach about it, 
he called a timeout before that field goal. He's almost yeah. like icing his own kicker, but he said they had a, a they were trying to report a guy eligible, which is weird on a on a field goal. You're not going to throw it anyhow, so why are you concerned if you didn't get him reported eligible? But they called the timeout before that. I just yeah. think in a pressure moment, it just builds the pressure further and further. And you got a rookie holder and Ryan Rico, and it was just it was just a shame that happened to him. It's been such a good feel good story early on. Did a good job. The snap wasn't great for Cal. Did a good job getting it down, but maybe because the snap was a little far off, he was too rushed on getting it down. Slipped out of his hand. Reminded me of the Tony Romo playoff game against Seattle, yeah. and kick goes awry. Kick goes awry. Season goes awry. One and four, zero oh and one in the North, and uh, you know they they have to figure out a way to go back to the drawing board. You know, uh, Jamar Chase is unbelievable today. Uh, yes. He, you know, they, they get they did everything you want to do to play the game. They got ahead. Mm-hmm. You know, they got they got the sandwich. Again, the double dip two yes. weeks in a row after not doing it since when was the last time? 2016. And now they go two weeks in a row against Carolina and the Ravens. They score those four touchdowns in a row. They get the halftime deferral to work for them. They're playing from ahead. They're stopping them on the, on the ground, forcing Lamar to be the one to beat them. In doing everything, if you were – building the path to how to beat the Ravens. Yep. They built the entire path the right way. And, you know, when I talked to ask Zach about specifically if this team has a problem finishing, he said, I thought we made those plays. I thought we were making those plays in the fourth quarter, the ones that we hadn't mm-hmm. been making. And it felt like that was the case. And obviously it set up the opportunities that, that didn't work. But Jamar is just, you know, he's there hitting. I mean, what an unbelievable ball from Burrow before halftime. Yeah. He gets hit a roughing penalty, still drops the dime in there. Same thing on the ball to Yosevash that set up the next one, gets hit and still drops a ball down in there for another deep shot. Higgins was winning all day, taking advantage of his matchups, just boxing people out. Chase Brown had some some really nice plays. They had the run game going enough. It was all the things we've seen and, and, and why you talk about I mean, he's finally got the offense that he wants. And you're seeing how special it can be. And yet you're one and four. Yeah. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. You can play the game the right way. And Baltimore is a good team. Like, think about it. I mean, Kansas City, Baltimore could be the two best teams mm-hmm. in the AFC. You can have your arguments and debates about all the rest of it. Kansas City and Baltimore might be the two best teams in the whole AFC. And the Bengals were a fourth and 16 and a botched field goal away from beating both of them. Right. Again, it don't matter. Like, that's great. Sounds great, man. But that's not what matters in the league. The league is about go out there and win, and they're one and four. And there's just no way around that. That's what you are. Um, On that note, go buy some Bengals gear at Cincy Shirts. No, seriously, there's tons of great stuff at Cincy Shirts. Uh, You you should be over there. Go to CincyShirts.com. Use uh, GrowlerPod at checkout, and you can get 10. This is a great time to buy. Go get you some Reds gear. Yeah, I mean, get some Tito gear, right? I mean, it's got to be time. Everybody's on board with the manager, I guess. Uh, go, there's tons of stuff. Everything Cincy all the time. Go get some Cincinnati shirts from Cincy Shirts and check that out. And, of course, and maybe there will be something fun and, and winnable that will have a viral shirt for you next week when the Bengals go to New York on Sunday Night Football to play against the Giants, who got a big win today at Seattle. So, again, no pushover. We'll see how winning time goes next week. You just never quite know anymore. Either way, Bengals move to one and four and uh, try to move forward and, and figure out where they go from here. All you know is it's a long, long way out. All right. Thanks, everybody, for uh, listening and watching the walkout. And uh, we will talk to you next time. Have a good one.